Hare Krishna and welcome. My name is Yugala Prita Devadasi. I'm so grateful and happy to be here today sharing with you some simple, healthy recipes that you can try out at home and nourish yourself as well as your loved ones. So today we are going to prepare a couple of different preps, but they are very, very simple. And combined together, they are actually uh, a wonderful meal for your lunch or dinner. So first we're going to cook amaranth and then saute some asparagus and some spinach and we're going to top it up with some avocado and then for dessert we're going to make some lovely yummy sweet bowls made from tahini and um, some sweetener. So let's have a look at the ingredients what we need for today's session. So of course for amaranth we need some amaranth so I have it here at one cup um, we'll go with two cups of hot boiling water. So I boiled my water already. We're going to just combine it in a pot. Then for asparagus, um, sauteed asparagus, we need some nice, uh, clean, fresh asparagus. We're going to chop off these um, a bit more chunky ends, like the whitish ones. We don't need them because they're a bit more chewy. Then a bunch of fresh spinach, washed. Then we'll need avocado, nice and ripe. And for the sweet preparation, we're going to need some sesame seeds, some tahini. I'm using black tahini, but regular tahini also works. Maple syrup, best is organic, of course. Some cinnamon and oat flour, which you can make yourself by simply grinding the oats in a blender. So let's begin with the asparagus. I mean, let's begin with amaranth. And before we start cooking in the Vedic tradition, we first offer a prayer to Lord Krishna, to our spiritual masters, teachers, and all the people who have contributed to us uh, learning um, these skills and uh, contributing to our progress in this life. So you can repeat with me. Om Gyanati Mirandesya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Guru Venamaha. Hare Krishna. So let's light the fire and we're going to start with the preparation that requires most time. So to cook, to cook amaranth takes about 20 25 minutes. We want the texture to be uh, creamy. If you have tasted halva before, which is very common in Hare Krishna tradition and Hare Krishna temples, then you know what creamy halva looks like. So we want amaranth to look like that creamy pasta. Halva, sorry. So we put the, the grains inside the pot and add double amount of the water. So I'm adding already hot water to speed up the process. So one cup. Two cups and you don't need to wash the the grains amaranth not necessary you can just put them right in and bring it to a boil so the, these let's talk a little bit about these amaranth seeds they are actually seeds uh, although often it's called grains but you can easily eat them on a kadashi no problem it's technically a seed and it's actually a very potent one. It's, it has all the amino acids. It's a, it's a complete protein, so it gives you a lot, of, a lot of strength, a lot of nourishment to your cells, to your body. It has a lot of magnesium, potassium, um, calcium, what else? A few other minerals that are actually very, very important for us. So definitely try to include this in your diet more often. Perhaps, you know, you can have a bit of variety, not just quinoa all the time on Akadashis or on regular days, but also try this out. And we are cooking in a very simple way today, simply uh, boiling in, in water, and then we're going to spice it up. We can actually spice it up right now, so that all the spices get infused in the water that amaranth is cooking in, and that it becomes even more nourishing. And easily digestible so we're adding a couple of bay leaves and then we're adding a couple of cloves so cloves are actually very very good 
because they give you power of digestion. So basically they increase your agni without increasing the heat in the body. So you can add these in. And what else? Then I'm going to add actually a little bit of my homemade masala. So I, this is not much left. But usually what I like to do, I like to grind whole spices in a blender so that I have homemade masala. So this one is a simple one. Uh, called the digestive masala. So what I do, I put coriander seeds, fennel seeds, cumin seeds, kalonji seeds, and a bit of turmeric, and I grind it in the blender. And there you go, I have my own masala mix. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of this into my amaranth. So that goes in. Oops. Oops. So, and we're gonna add some ghee. So let's put about a tablespoon of ghee. That should be fine. Give it a mix. So we're keeping it simple. And now we can cover it and let it simmer <clears throat> for 20 minutes. Let's uh, prepare our asparagus. So let's take a whole bunch of it and chop off the ends that we don't want. So about this much. And we're keeping these. You can chop it up smaller. I'm keeping it long, so um, I prefer them this size. Asparagus is actually a very, a very wonderful vegetable. It's actually called a super, super vegetable, super food, because it is um, detoxifying. It detoxifies your kidneys, helps to pull out toxins from the kidneys, and so prevents kidney stones. And, uh, and it actually has a bunch of different benefits, including uh, benefits for women's health, pregnancy, <clears throat> um, arthritis, many different ailments it can help with so it is very useful to include it in your diet on a regular basis to reap those benefits it's one of the in Ayurveda one of the six vegetables that are recommended for uh, detoxification so then we have uh, what else we have in Ayurveda um, let me think so we have daikon radish white daikon radish which is good to detoxify I don't remember which specific organ. Then we have asparagus for the kidney. I think also daikon radish is also for the kidneys. And then we have karela or bitter gourd, which is detoxifying for the liver. And one more for the liver, I uh, can't remember now. And then also we have okra and taro root, which are detoxifying, or pulling the toxins, binding the toxins together and helps to move it out of your body. So including these uh, six vegetables, I mentioned five, but there is one more that comes to my mind, I'll, I'll say it. So now let's put the pan on so that we can saute our asparagus. So asparagus, it's not going to take a long time. It's actually a very quick prep to make. So once again, we're going to add a tablespoon of ghee. Ghee is really, really good for you. It doesn't have cholesterol, like, I mean, it doesn't have the bad cholesterol that, you know, sometimes people are afraid of. Let's give a stir to our amaranth. It's cooking away. So, we'll do the asparagus. And in the meantime, we can also prepare, pause here. So, once the pan is hot, we can add asparagus. We're keeping it simple, not um, much spices at all. So we just place it on the pan gently. And let it saute for about five to seven minutes. We want to keep the tenderness of the asparagus. And then once it's cooked and stops steaming, then we're going to drizzle it with some lime juice. I'm going to add the salt a little bit later because what happens if you add salt at the initial stage of the vegetable cooking, then it very quickly releases water and it becomes a bit mushy. So we don't want um, 
we don't want the asparagus to release all the water right now. So we're going to wait with the salt and add it a little bit later. Cover with the lid and let it saute on a medium heat. And in the meantime, we can start with our sweet preparation, which is um, sweet balls with tahini. And these are oat sweet balls, so they're gluten-free and they are very, very light and very delicious. Very, very delicious. So what we need to do actually, it's not necessary, but, but I find that if you toast the oat flour, then it brings out certain like nutty flavor, uh, lovely flavor to the, to the sweet balls. But you can also use the oat flour without toasting them. But again, some people may feel like, you know, how can you eat raw flour? So yeah, better to toast it a little bit. So I'm making a small amount here. So I'm just toasting about five tablespoons of oat flour. So let's check how is our asparagus. So take about five minutes. We don't want it too, too burned or too mushy. So now at this stage, we can grate a little bit of nutmeg. Not necessary. I just like the flavor of it. So that goes on top. Fresh nutmeg is the best if you have the, the actual nutmeg. It has also a lot of health benefits. But again, avoid using too much because it can be... Um, can be a bit too intense. So that should be enough. And then we sprinkle a little bit of salt, of course. A little bit of salt goes in. And we'll add some black pepper as well. So let's put it on the side. And in the meantime, we can toast our oat flour for the cookies, for the sweet balls. So just put it on a low flame, medium flame. And gently toast it till you can smell some kind of flavor aroma coming out and it becomes slightly brownish you don't want to burn it so be careful here you can stir it so slightly getting uh, change uh, change of the color slightly more darker so this this should be fine now we can put it away to cool and in the meantime we're going to use the same pan that we cooked the asparagus. We don't need to wash it, it's all the good stuff from the asparagus. So we're going to put it on the flame and now we're going to do our sautéed greens. So again like a teaspoon of ghee and we can use some spices here. If you like, you can put some asafoetida, just a pinch, you don't need much of it. It's better to, of course, wait till the oil is nice and hot, or the ghee is nice and hot. Then we'll add um, about half a teaspoon of ginger powder, or you can use fresh, then you will use a tablespoon of fresh ginger, uh, ginger grated. And what else can we add here? We can add a pinch of cumin. And I like using my spice mix, so again I'm adding coriander, fennel, cumin, kalonji, and turmeric mix. Just a, about a teaspoon. Or you can just grind uh, with a mortal and pestle some kalonji seeds, ajwine seeds, and coriander. And this mix will be amazing for your digestion. It's really, really good. So give it a, a few seconds for the spices to release the, the goodness and they flavor so we can put this away and let's sprinkle some cayenne pepper on our asparagus so usually you would want to serve this with a slice uh, and a bit of a juice of a lime so that it helps with digestion and it gives us that nice flavor so sprinkle some juice on top and a pinch of cayenne pepper or freshly ground black pepper again you wouldn't want to use black pepper powder because it oxidizes quite quickly so it's always good to grind it fresh and actually for any spices most of the spices it's best to to kind of grind it fresh 
um, blended fresh, you know, so that you get all the good uh, nutrients from them. Now let's add our spinach that we washed when the ghee and spices are hot. Then we slowly add our spinach or any other greens that you may have that may be in season. Ayurveda is very much about cooking uh, things that are seasonal, that are locally available. So that goes in. Let it boil for a bit, then you can add the rest. Let's check on our amaranth. So now this is done. This is done. We can switch it off. So if, if you see there is some water remaining, it's okay. It will get absorbed. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Mine is actually a little too dry now, but it's okay. No problem. So spinach, um, Ayurveda says that we should have something green every day if not at every meal. Greens are so, so important for us. It has a lot of nutrients, a lot of beneficial uh, vitamins. And uh, so nowadays we have, we see the tendency that it's popular to put, you know, green spinach and kale into your smoothies. But the, the problem is that when they are not cooked, when they are raw, then it actually takes out uh, magnesium from your body so uh, there's something called um, I forget the name of it but something in those greens that has this um, material need to look it up that it actually leaches some other good uh, vitamins from your body minerals from your body so that problem goes away once you cook it once you put some heat to the greens then it actually evaporates not too wilted we still want the vibrant green color. So this is about enough. We can switch off the flame. And let it just rest while we are busy making our sweet balls. So now let's add the oat flour to a bowl. And then we add the rest of the ingredients. So I need a pinch of salt. Whenever you're making sweet preps, it's always a good idea to add just a tiny pinch of salt to bring out that sweet flavor and uh, yeah it's recommended then we add a about a teaspoon of cinnamon powder this should be enough and then we go with our wet ingredients so we'll add about a tablespoon of maple syrup And tahini paste, or if you have uh, regular tahini, you can use regular tahini, or I have this black tahini, so I'm using this guy. So drop some two to three tablespoons. Then, if we need more, we can add more so that we can bind the balls together. And now, just uh, combine it together until they form a dough, a dough-like consistency and they stick together so you can shape it into balls. So until it's kind of all uh, combined together, that should be fine. And now let's heat our sesame seeds in which we're going to roll our sweet balls. So we just need to kind of toast it slightly so it tastes better once you toast them and it actually is better to digest when you apply some heat to them. Ideally in Ayurveda you would want um, to grind the sesame seeds, toast it and grind it and then sprinkle on your food. Then the calcium that is available in the sesame seeds, it's really absorbed into your body. So that's the best way, but today we're just gonna have them whole. Just roll our sweet bowls, energy bowls, in those sesame seeds. So once they're a little bit brownish, then we're good to go. Mine is a bit too brown. 
but it's okay, it will give us a nutty flavor. So pour it on a plate to cool it off. And then we can start rolling the bowl. So you just take a, depending on what size bowls you like, but these are quite rich in flavor and in texture, so we can make them smallish. Just roll it between your hands gently. And then look how lovely they look. They're kind of glowing. You can keep them without the sesame seeds if you want, or you can just roll them gently and they stick to the ball nicely. That's it. So, and the good thing about these sweet balls is that there's no white sugar, there's no white flour. We know that these can be not so good for our health. So these are actually a great option if you're avoiding white sugar, white flour because they actually taste really, really good even without these items. So we got how many? Seven out of the small amount that we made. So that's pretty good. So let's finish off. Now I put it everything uh, in a bowl. Of course, we offer first to Krishna and then we can transfer into the bowls. So I'm gonna top it up our, we can call it Krishna bowl with some avocado. So let's just scoop out some nice slices. You can cut it inside and then scoop it out. So avocado is actually a really, really great source of good fat for us and we need fat. Our body, our cells require a lot of fat for different functions and, um, and avocado is one of the best sources of that. Let's try to place it nicely, grab it all, and just spread it on the side. I want to open it a little bit, like that. So this is actually a very healthy meal for us, and I hope Krishna enjoyed it as well. So let's sprinkle with some salt, uh, the avocado. A little bit of salt goes on top. Some lime juice. Lime is um, better to use than the lemon because lime turns alkaline in our bodies. Very, very good. It helps with digestion. So sprinkle some of that. And then let's grab some cayenne pepper. Just a little bit or just black pepper is also fine. So that's it. That's our Buddha bowl right here. Then our healthy energy bowls, sweet bowls. Um, so we had oat flour, tahini in the sweet bowls. What else? We put maple syrup, cinnamon, a pinch of salt. And uh, that was it. And we rolled it in roasted sesame. And in our Buddha bowl or Krishna bowl, we have our amaranth, cooked amaranth, and uh, sautéed spinach, and fresh avocado with lime juice, and cayenne pepper and salt. And let's look at our asparagus. So we simply sautéed it in ghee, and some, that was it, and we sprinkled salt and cayenne pepper and lime juice. So options for you to cook, they doesn't t it doesn't take a long time. You can get it done in, in about 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. And uh, yes, very, very healthy, a delicious prasadam. It was my pleasure to share these recipes with you. Hare Krishna.